Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with Alex, the co-founder and CEO of CanMonkey, a company that actually uh, takes out trash cans to and from you know, somebody's backyard or garage. Alex currently has 4,000 active subscriptions, meaning 4,000 people uh, in 18 states across the nation paying you on a subscription model to take their cans to and from their backyard to the street, and you have over 500 can runners that are active right now and we're about to tour your entire business and break everything down alex i really appreciate you letting us come and hang out for a little while thank you appreciate it So where did you get the idea to actually start the can monkey business? So my business partner, Mark, actually started the idea in his neighborhood in North Scottsdale, walking his dog one night uh, in a affluent area. Uh, he saw someone take their Mercedes, drive into their driveway, right into their garage and leave the can at the garage. And he thought in that moment, well, if I don't like doing this, you know, sir, this job, neither does my neighbor. Maybe I can start a little route maybe hire someone down the road where they could do it and then there his problem solved and was thinking in that aspect mm -hmm. uh how he does all things is how he does everything so yeah. he wanted to really do it the right way really grow a business so after his first year got pr did everything i got in the newspaper uh built his business but also saw that going after homeowners maybe would take a little bit longer because it's such a new concept mm -hmm. uh, and what we found out a little bit later is that the can to curb category which mark had started with can monkey was the first of its kind so with that being said when you're telling people about a service that they never heard before it takes a little bit yeah uh, of you know do i need that what is that uh, and so coming from my background of title and escrow and real estate or I, I saw a little entry entry with the vacation rental world so kind of pivoted in that way and that's where it really took off to where we could see a niche for it yeah uh, and still taking care of the homeowners as well so it started out in the vacation rental like airbnb type of niche right where like you know, you think and you would imagine that, you know, when people are Airbnb being a home, you know, who is taking the can to the curb, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you have turnover like every day or every other day, right? And, and the cleaners are coming in. But at the end of the day, like the cans only go out on a specific day of the week, I would imagine, right? A thousand percent. And sometimes it's always changing. And then what I mean by that is trash and recycling are not always on the same day. Mm. So if trash goes out on Tuesday, recycling on Thursday. Who's taking out the day before on Tuesday, day before on Thursday? So that's four times a week, 16 times a month. That if you're hoping the cleaners do it, maybe they do it on the day that has to get out, but who's taking it back in? Mm. And now what we've found is that either you love or hate Airbnbs and a lot of neighbors next to Airbnbs don't love them. Yep. So they are doing what they can to get their neighbor in trouble. So one of the easiest ways now with these regulations in place and different ordinances is that they call and blame this, you know, call the city and blame the neighbor leaving the trash can out. Mm. So now mm -hmm. more than ever is there a need to make sure there's a company taking your can back in. And also what we do with our proprietary technology is we take pictures and their timestamps. Mm -hmm. So now we have proof that the can is back in its original location or at the curb at a certain time yeah. per the regulations and ordinances in the city. So interesting that a, a big complaint is just the simple fact that people are leaving the can in the street, yes. right? And the neighbors don't like that, obviously, right? And uh, so like the can's getting out, but it's just not getting back. A thousand percent. You know, which is so interesting, right? And then the idea that you have all the proof and the documentation of bringing that can back. And, you know, we'll talk in just a little while too. It's so interesting and fascinating because when you had initially, like when we started talking, you talked about the Airbnb and everything mm -hmm. like that, right? But there's actually a lot of other demographics that you're now servicing as well. And uh, I'm excited to talk about that here in just a minute. So you're a subscription-based company, which I love that, right? And what does it actually cost the consumer uh, on a monthly basis? Or is it weekly? Is it monthly? How do you charge? We try to keep things very simple. And what we start off, off with is every price is at $49 a month. Okay. And what I mean by that is that's our going rate for one trash can, one recycling to get taken out to the curb and back every week for the month. Okay, so once a week, they're going to the property, they're taking the can out and back, so four times for $49.99. Yes, for, okay. the whole, for the whole month, yep. yes. 
And then we do have additional costs if you have more than one trash can. So some of these Airbnbs maybe have two, three trash cans. Um, if you have a long driveway, uh, Camelback Mountain, you know, for visualization, okay. maybe an extra, you know. So, and then those, we only charge an extra $5 per category. Okay. So sometimes you're looking at maybe $54 a month, $59 a month if you have more than one trash can and a long driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, that takes care of the whole monthly subscription sure. of us taking your cans to the curb and back. So does the $49.99 include trash and recycle to go in and out every week? Yes. Uh, if trash and recycling are on separate days, and it's just included in that price. So yeah. we don't try to overcomplicate it. Um, if it's on the same day, it's just better for us. But trash, recycle, whatever it is, it's all included in that price for sure. the month. And then obviously, I mean, now you've got 4,000 people, right? Paying you guys, you know, you're in uh, 18 different uh, states yes. now. Yes. So like, how did you scale it? I mean, obviously you're not the one going out anymore, right. taking the cans, you know, in and out. And, yes. you know, we're at your uh, headquarters here in Tempe, Arizona, yes. right? Um, how did you get it to that point? In the beginning, it was my business partner and I doing the actual routes until we got to about 100 properties. It was him and myself doing it, uh, which gave us the, you know, the knowledge of knowing what goes into it, the difficulties of what it may be, the gates getting stuck, the you know, can still being full when you're bringing it back in, the little idiosyncrasies that you learn on the job. We got to learn that as well. Yeah. So it was very uh, important to learn that. And then when we were able to build a route of at least 15, 20 properties that they could do within an hour or so, because that's kind of mm -hmm. what we were doing, we were able to now replace ourselves with someone that could do the job. So when we got to a point where we were like four or 500 properties in the Phoenix market and Mark and I weren't doing the routes anymore. And for example, if I was in Scottsdale and we had a route in Peoria, you know, it got to the point of like, hey, if I wasn't doing that route in Peoria, why couldn't I do a route in Austin, Texas? Mm. Why couldn't I do a route in Park City? Why couldn't I do a route somewhere else? If I'm not doing the actual route now in Peoria, why yeah. couldn't I? Um, and so I'm a delusionally optimistic person. I try to, you know, think that I can do every, so it's when I reached out to some counterparts of ours that had some properties in other markets that said they needed the same service. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's do it. Let's try, let's do the same process that we do here. And just imagine that Park City is Peoria, Arizona, and we're just gonna do the same thing. And when you try it and you know, it works out or you try it and then you know, fix a little things and pivot, you, you, that works a little bit better now. And then you take that and then you don't recreate the wheel sure. and you take that again and then you take that again. So um, that's how we saw that we were gonna scale the quickest. You know, could yeah. we get 4,000 properties in Phoenix, Arizona? Of course. Yep. Um, could we get a little bit quicker by growing outwards? Yeah, and that's what we did. Sure. Um, and, and now, the bigger that we are, it's it's as hard as it was when we had 100 properties, you know? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot more that goes into it, but when you have a great team that you build around the systems and processes that you tried yourself, it, yeah. you just you get better over time. Sure, and now you have 500 active canners, or yes. not canners, they're can runners. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's obviously a lot of active people. Obviously, you said you have thousands of people yes. who have signed up yes. and who are in you know, your software, your database. Yes. Um, what are the legalities of you know hiring a can runner? Um, you know, how does that work, obviously? I mean, do they need insurance? I and mean, what do you need to have them do? Obviously, I'm sure they have to pass some sort of a background check. Good question, yeah. We partner with a company called GigWage. GigWage is a company that uh, we use for um, sending, like, sending payments. Mm -hmm and it's meant for the gig economy. Um, so they do background checks already. They do, uh, I think through a company called Checker. So okay. they really help in a lot of that uh, of situations that mm -hmm. we need to make sure that our due diligence is done. Uh, we're all, like I said, as much as we're talking about the short-term rental industry and uh, people paying us for our services, my other clients are my can runners. Mm. Uh, they're my number one clients. Without them, I would not be able to do the routes. So um, we make sure that we take care of them and we pay them three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that's through this gig, you know, gig wage. Uh, and the legalities really is they reach out to us, they go through the application on the App Store or Google Play, we're on both those um, platforms, and they fill out some waivers, they're like an independent contractor. Sure. So, yeah. and a lot of these people are coming from uh, Uber Eats, mm -hmm. Grubhub, Instacart, and uh, a lot of the rules that apply for those companies are the same as us. Yeah. So they kind of already understand um, the logistics of it. Yeah. And then we have a couple of training sessions and get right into it. So talk to me about how a can runner can actually get paid. You know, obviously your kind of low end, you know, base uh, mm -hmm. subscription is $49.99. Mm -hmm. uh, so how much would a can runner get paid if you were to bring them on and they went out and did a route? Great question. So in the very beginning, when we were trying to figure out how to scale this mm -hmm. with the can runners and paying them accordingly with only receiving $49, 
Uh, we looked at it as trying to get their routes to uh, get done within 15 to 20 stops. Oh wow! And my thought process in the beginning is they got 15 to 20 stops done in an hour mm -hmm. and I can pay them a dollar per stop. That's yep. like $20 an hour. So how we were looking to build this out was let's pay them $20 an hour mm -hmm. and give them a couple routes. Okay. And look, once again, we're looking for people in the gig economy, not working all day long. So more like sell them out of the job than mm -hmm. into the job. Like, hey, you're looking for something for two, three hours a day? Yep, perfect. So when we got them on, we give them a route. So you said you were in the pool yep. industry. I was. Um, so we do the same thing. So we give them routes. You know, so when can you work? I can work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And I say, great. How many routes do you want to work? I want to work, you know, two to three routes. Mm -hmm. I can give you three to four hours. Great. Yeah. I give them routes that are an hour to two hours long and fill in those time frames they gave me. And like I was saying earlier, like we give them that consistency and persistency. Mm -hmm. So at least they know with Cam Monkey that from 12 o'clock to four o'clock, they had four hours of mm -hmm. routes to do. And then after that, they could do Uber Eats or before that they could do, you know, Uber. Um, and then they just kind of fit our schedule like they would a pool route. Yeah. So, you know, every Tuesday you had a pool route in a certain area and they get comfortable with that area and sure. they, they know the area really well and they take really good pride in that. And so that's what we do. And mm -hmm. so, if a, a can runner is with us and they really like that route and they really do a good job, we keep them on that route yeah. because they, they really own that route. And they get to the point where they get kind of territorial. And if we give that route to someone else or we break that route up, they're like, hey, what happened to 123 one, West Elm? Yeah. Like, oh, what, what, what about it? They're yeah. like, I want that back. I know that dog over there. So yeah. they kind of learn a little, uh, the little quirks of the, the, the gig and they really yeah. like it. And so I think with them having the same thing every week, gives them some kind of, everyone, we're creatures of habit. We yeah. like that. So it kind of gives them a, a job without having a job, with sure. having the flexibility of being the gig economy, but also having the stability of knowing that you're making X amount of dollars. So crucial in the beginning, you know, when you have a startup to partner with people who can help you, right? And really take you to that next level. You know, I think a lot of times you can't do it all on your own, right? You have to partner and have incredible people uh, that you work alongside with, you know, to achieve your goal, obviously. Um, is it difficult at all to get the route? Because I would imagine that if when you're building a route right if you have a house that is you know two or three miles away all of a sudden like a route has to be really close uh, together right mm -hmm. when you're scaling and you're brand new how do you get the route to be so compact great question and I'm not in the business of losing money but sometimes to start business you kind of have to go in there and say like okay can I get a route made out of this and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not the best one but if I'm getting 20 properties in a new market and I can get them done in maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. But I also know that I have some other, you know, connections in the area that can give me another 10 properties, another five properties. And I start, you know, reaching out to like-minded people that maybe need my services. Now, if I go in that market, mm -hmm. if I know like in 30, 60 days, I can add another 20 properties on, which is usually what happens. I now know at 40 properties, I'm breaking even. Yeah. I now know at 50 properties, I'm making a little bit more money. And at 100 properties, I know that we're doing pretty decent. Sure. So it's in that idea is, okay, is this a market I can scale in? Is this a market that I can grow with in 30, 60 days. Mm -hmm. um, this is a market that we're just gonna stay in and maybe just be stagnant, but the partnership that we're going into will talk really highly about us and uh, on social media, which will help us get greater awareness. Yeah. And that's more like a marketing you know, agreement. Them. Like, so like a lot of it is being strategic, mm -hmm. um, but really I'm going in there to make money. Yeah. And if I can go in there and scale and get to the point where I 40, 50 properties in that 20 mile radius of the algorithm that we've kind of created, mm -hmm. um, then we'll do it. Yeah. And if it's something that we can't really scale in, it's, some, it's okay to say no. I hope you're enjoying the business tour so far. Really quick, if you wouldn't mind, if you know of a business that you think would be a really cool tour, or if you own a business that you would like to get featured, all you have to do is text 480-418-5339, the word business, okay? Again, 480-418-5339, the word business, and we'll see if you qualify or if the business qualifies for us to go ahead and tour it. Now let's just go ahead and get back to the tour. Okay, so we're out here in Tempe, Arizona, and uh, you know we were driving down the road and I was like, man, I wonder what house it is, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> and there's obviously a can out here. Um, talk to me a bit about, you know, getting into like the backyard of a property and then also like have you ever had to deal with like dogs or anything like that? Good question. When people are signing up on our service, we're trying to be a like the SaaS that handles your trash. Yeah. So no communication with humans, right? That's the thought process, even though we're there, we're still there. And when you give when you sign up, we want you to give us all the information that you'd give 
your neighbor that mm -hmm. was gonna do the property for you. We're only as good as the instructions provided. Sure. So with that being said, we have, you know, all the areas that we need, you know, entered. Like, yeah. is it in the garage? If it is, what's the garage code? Is it behind the gate? Is there a gate lock? So we try yeah. to go through all Are the, there dogs? Are there dogs? Yeah. So, you know, is it Airbnb? Mm -hmm. Is it a home? Like, is there gonna be different people? Like, we try to yeah. ask all these questions. Even though we ask, sometimes we don't get all the answers. Right. So yeah. we're instruction takers. So if you're asking us to go to the can, you know, take your can to yeah. the curb and back, we're gonna do that. If you didn't tell us there's a dog, if you didn't tell us there's a sure. gate lock, Maybe the first one or two visits might not be the best, but we work it out and we'll say, hey, is there a gate lock? Hey, yeah. yes, there is. Okay, great. We couldn't take your can out this week because it was locked. So sure. we try to get as much information in the beginning so we can you know, not have that happen, but people are all humans yeah. and sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes we forget or we're rushing through things. Um, but for the most part, if we're given the information in the beginning, we have no hiccups. You're golden. Yes. I love that. the types of demographics where they would pay to have you come take their can in and out? Airbnb and the short-term rental is a great uh, low-hanging fruit for us. And it was great for a startup to get our feet wet and know that there was um, you know, interest in our company, give us you know, uh, enough fuel to keep us going. But the main audience, what we always thought it was, was like the elderly. Um, mm was the, uh, you know, the people with family that travel a lot. It's the it, everyday people that are just looking for an extra help and with the tedious tasks that, that, you know, if they need landscaping done, they need pool done, they need their cans done, you know, yep. so along those lines. So, that, so now going to a point where we have 4,000, it's like now how do we go and, and target that audience? Mm -hmm. um, but what we're doing now, or what, what has happened now naturally is a lot of like elderly uh, adults are paying for their parents. Um, we saw a lot during the winter season. We're even seeing it now during the, the um, summer heats where these heat warnings are coming up we have people saying my mother is elderly she yeah. lives in phoenix Can she's you... 85 or whatever she's not is 117 out i mean you yeah. don't want her That's walking to the end of the driveway a thousand percent yeah. and so we see it like that with the, the heat wave coming up we see it in the fact that like hey i have a second home um that i'm not staying at but i don't want anyone to know that i'm not there so can you just take the cans out they're gonna mm. be empty every week but i just want security done wow so a lot of these things that we're seeing now are just um, an added benefit of our service. That doesn't mean maybe that's why they need it, but that's where like I feel that if more people know that there's a service like ours exists, more people would use it because it's 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 very practical mm -hmm. in a lot of sense. So I can give you a million different you know so, uh, scenarios that have come up, but really like I think if we had to target something from a business, it'd be the like elderly. It'd be mm -hmm. elderly as like the, the older people that need help, that maybe just had surgery, that you know maybe um, have rocks that you know are taking yeah. their garbage mm -hmm. cans on, like just little things that you don't think about because like it doesn't. But I hear it from people saying you're a godsend. Thank you so much for the service. My mom was you know stumbling every week, taking the cans through the gravel. I was like, I gotta write wow. that one down. Down. Like, or like, thank you so much. I was worried that my you know, dad was gonna pass out taking the can up the curb because it's getting really hot out there. Like, mm -hmm. I gotta write that down. You know, so all these little like, you know, thank yous yeah. are now marketing ideas that, you know, if that person has that, you know, um, issue, other people have that issue. Sure. And that's what we're learning now, being here a little bit longer and after, you know, um, staying with the low hanging fruit, we realize there's a whole other array of people to go after. It's just um, a little bit more um, abundant. So yeah. it, in a good way, but it's, you know, hard to target audience. Below. So fascinating. Like I never even thought about the people who have a second home that they want to make their neighbors think that there's somebody living there. I mean, dude, like brilliant. It's just things right? that come up that like I wouldn't even think of. It's just people say, great idea for doing this for security reasons. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're like, holy cow, I learned something new, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's so fascinating as you scale a company, right? You have the kind of idea and then you learn as you go, right? And, and as you go, you develop new ideas and new methodologies and new ways of targeting new demographics of people and, and really scaling the company from all different angles. And, um, you know, obviously it's exactly what you're doing. And I know for a fact the day will come very soon where you're at, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 people uh, and it'll be really cool to watch. Awesome, I appreciate yeah. that. I know there's probably people out there, right, that are like, you know, Alex, like I get it, but at the end of the day, like people don't need that. Like why would somebody pay for that, right? Yeah. And talk to me a little bit about what you would say to that type of person. Yes, I mean, you get those people who either 
say, you don't need that service, it's a silly service, I can do it myself. Or you get the people that are like, hey, that's a, a genius idea, like why didn't I think of it? Mm. So it's either way, but the ones that were like, that's a silly idea, I don't need it. It, it could be it, I'm not gonna sell that person on it. But then you kind of ask them some questions, like, well, do you like doing it? Like, yeah. who does it in your family? My son does it, does he do it? Well, when he doesn't do it, I gotta do it in the morning. Okay, well, how about you try it for the first month? And so that's what we realized in the beginning, when we got that pushback, they just didn't know what they were saying no mm. to, because they never had anyone do it, or they never had anyone do it at the rate that I wanted to give them to. So we'd go in like the first month free. And what we found in the beginning is like from the homeowner side of it, once a homeowner had the service and they had the service take like being done for them, they never went and canceled wow. it. They stayed on. So our churn rate with homeowners is like less than 1%. Really? Yes. Like, cause once you don't have, to, it's like, yeah. you know, you're talking about um, the pooper scooper company, yeah, right? Like, yep. like if you go like a couple months not clean up poop, like, do you want to go and clean it up now? No. Like, no. You know, so it's like the kind of the same thing. Like once you have someone doing something for you, you kind of just get used of, you know, paying that subscription. Mm -hmm. A lot of people pay subscriptions and they don't even know what they're paying for and they're going to cancel it and then they don't. And then they see it next month. Like that's what happens in this monthly recurring mm -hmm. revenue. And, and with us, we're just really good instruction takers. Yeah. So like once we get in and got your property on route, we just keep taking the can to the curb and back. Um, and so those that don't like the service, they don't need to use the service, but once they try it out, they they're gonna go fall in love. And then yeah. on the vacation rental side, um, they love it. And then what we found also is that they would hear things from like maybe the neighbors or the, the um, or like guests. Mm -hmm. And the guests would say the can's still full or they missed it. And we would look into it and we did it. So that's why we started taking pictures. Yeah. And that's why we kind of like CYA, you know, covered our, uh, our tush. And so we went in that aspect of making sure we had all of our evidence. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we realized now in the Airbnb industry, there's a lot of guests that say things that are not true to try mm -hmm. to get refer, you know, whatever it is, yeah. refunds and whatnot. So um, as long as I have a little bit more, you know, evidence, yep. uh, we're protected. When it comes to innovation, you know, anytime somebody innovates, you're going to get pushback, right? And I'm mm -hmm. sure there was a day and a time where the first pool cleaner ever right. got a bunch of pushback because people are like, people can clean their own pool, you yeah. know? And then same thing in the car wash industry or hanging your Christmas lights on the front of your house. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there are so many random services that we can um, hire people to do now that I'm sure at one point, you know, the, the economy was like, nobody needs that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And what we found, and I know you know this from being a business, like, don't you want to partner with people who their one thing is focusing on like one mm -hmm. thing? And that's what I'm now creating in this industry is that we're only focusing on trash cans. Yeah. That's it. So some people want to be multitaskers and they want to control everything and they want to do everything. And what I've found is that you're not great at when you do everything. Mm. Do one thing in the very beginning. You know, I talk about it all the time. If you're an entrepreneur trying to start a company, you know, Focus on one thing until you're the master at it. And then and only then should you ever try to do another thing. So talk to me a little bit about the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, people are watching, they're curious, you know, how much uh, do you make, you know, on average? What's your best month? I mean, what are some numbers that we can uh, kind of share with everybody? Thousand percent. I mean, so in the beginning of this, um, it, it wasn't like a slam dunk. In our first year, we add on about 24 properties total in our first 12 wow. months. In our second year, I think we were at about 100. Uh, and at the end of our two, second year, uh, we had over 200 properties. Mm. Um, in our best month, we've added on 500 new properties wow. uh, at an average of $50 per property. So yeah. um, that just kind of gives you in context, the first two years was nothing where we're at now. So sure. us now getting the momentum, building on to the brand awareness, getting out there where now people are speaking about Cam Monkey without me being the first one they hear, hear from has really helped and we're really feeling that magnitude and, and, and really kind of build up now. Do you have 4,000 active uh, subscriptions right now yeah, across the nation? We have over 4,000 properties active right now. We have over 5,000 on our platform, uh, maybe properties that came on that we couldn't service yet, that they're sitting on in the queue. Uh, so in the platform, over 5,000, but active over 4,000 currently. Yeah. What is the main overhead that it costs to run this type of company? Uh, the main overhead would essentially be paying out the can runners, okay. you know, essentially, uh, yes, we have a beautiful headquarters here. Uh, we have our team that comes in here every day to uh, make sure the operations are moving, you know, efficiently. Uh, could we all be at home? Yeah. Yes. Could we all, you know, do we need an office? No. Um, so, uh, but at the end of the day, the overhead that's kind of 
you know, fixated is what we pay the can runners. And how many actual like employees does it take, obviously we're in your office right now, um, to run, you know, the back end of everything? These are all our full-time wow. employees. Yeah, we have three full-time employees uh, in the office. We have uh, two virtual assistants uh, overseas that we're adding on to our back end support. Um, we have gone from like the Flintstones era to the Jetsons era. Yeah. Uh, and what had worked before doesn't work now. Uh, so we're bettering our processes, mm -hmm. bettering our systems, uh, or getting better technology, mm -hmm. you know, instead of using Excel files yeah. and, and Google Sheets, now actually having uh, companies, you know, SaaS's out there that are meant for companies that like ours. So uh, really get into a position to take on the growth of doubling our business, quadrupling mm -hmm. our business, um, and, and getting ready for that right now as we continue yeah. to grow. And what is the goal? I mean, do you want to go from 4,000 to 10,000? I mean, do you have kind of a, a, an immediate goal that you are working toward? The short-term goal internally would be 10,000 properties. Uh, initially, 1,000 was a goal. You yeah. know, initially five, 500, 100, you know. Um, so it's always changing. Uh, every new mountaintop is beginning of the next mountaintop. So yeah. 10,000 is our, you know, goal right now. We believe with the team that we have right now, obviously adding on a little bit here and there, but we're built out right now to where we can double our business, get to 10,000 properties. And with that would be a, a, a new, you know, benchmark for us, uh, you know, ultimately, a million properties, sure. you know, a hundred thousand properties, you know, not just Airbnbs, but homeowners, elderly, uh, you know, 55 and older communities, mm -hmm. HOAs, uh, maybe, you know, it, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, but right now, just the next step would yeah. be that 10,000. And what's the number one way that you acquire new people, new customers? I mean, is it uh, Google? Is it Facebook, uh, social media, word of mouth? Do you have kind of a number one? Uh, the number one would be honestly a mixture of it, just being a small startup and, and not really having the budget to really go out there and, and do a mass marketing. Um, but where we're at right now, a lot of it is the social media, the word of mouth, uh, people talking to other people, talking about our service. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's going now where a lot of it is the word of mouth. Yeah. You know, people talking about a service that's so unique that they love, um, or whether they're talking badly about it. Like we are talking about you know earlier, sometimes the haters still give me publicity. You know, <laughs> they talk about the silly, idea who would ever want this and then someone signs up for it because they're yeah. the one that need it so as long as people will talk about it that's all I'm looking for and we give them something to talk about by providing the great service and giving them what you know they were, they didn't know they were missing sure yeah no I love that and uh, you know where can people actually find you if they want to be a can runner um, or they want to eventually partner I mean they want to collaborate with you in any way shape or form how can they get a hold of you CanMonkey.com is our website. Uh, it's easy to remember, CanMonkey.com. We are now on the Apple Store and Google Play, so for can runners looking for extra side income, people wanting to maybe do this uh, in addition to what they're already doing, going on the Apple Store, Google Play, downloading the application. If you're looking to get the service on for your property, short-term rental, for your elderly parent, whatever it is, CanMonkey.com. Um, like I said, we are a platform where homeowners can log in, sign up, and then we put their property on a route. Wow. So cool. I love that, Alex. And how can people get a hold of you in particular if they want to talk to you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Alexander Shapiro, uh, also on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, please reach out, uh, say hi, uh, ask any questions. I'm an open book. Um, if we're in your market, we'd love to, you know, have you try our service out. We offer two weeks free. Um, we'd love to, you know, have you try it out for themselves, see how they like it. Let me know their feedback. Uh, and if we're not in their market, all we need is about 20 to 25 properties to kind of get started within the 10 mile radius. Uh, and then from there, we build the route. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for letting us tour your business. Thanks, and Austin. I really appreciate you being, you know, so open and transparent with everything. And I know that a lot of people watching will either want to work with you, they'll want your service, or they'll be inspired by what you've been able to do. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you.